Hola, bienvenidos. Welcome to beautiful Aguas Calientes. Buenos dias, good morning country collectors. Today we are exploring the capital of Aguascalientes, which just so happens to go by the same name. Aguascalientes, <laughs> Aguascalientes. This also means that we are in our 19th state here in Mexico. Wow, that is just so cool. We can't wait to show you around. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. And make sure to stay until the end where we give you some more of our recommendations from the city. All right, let's start with how we got here. At Morelia, Michoacan, Central bus station, we took a bus on the Primera Plus line heading for Aguas Calientes for 612 pesos each. The beautiful journey took about five and a half hours. Once in Aguas Calientes, we got a secure taxi for 35 pesos to our place. Let's check out where we're staying, but first, hug bug! Yay! Yay. <laughs> This lovely open apartment costs us $29 per night and is fit with a queen size bed, full kitchen, air conditioning, Wi Fi, smart TV, and full bathroom. The hosts are extremely accommodating and they have a few other apartments on site, so I'll put their website down in the description box below. Something else we love about where we're staying is the neighborhood. This is Barrio del Encino, also known as Barrio de Triana, which is one of the four original neighborhoods here in Aguas Calientes. Right now we are down here in this neighborhood, Central Park Jardín del Encino. And this is one of my most favorite parts of the city that I've found so far. I just love coming down here and listening to the fountain, watching the pigeons do their pigeon -y thing, and looking up at the grandness of Templo del Señor del Encino. This magnificent church was built in 1773 and is well known because of the famous Cristo Negro del Encino located inside. Outside you can marvel at its stunning Baroque and neoclassical facade. Located next to the temple is the Jose Guadalupe Posada Museum. He was born here in 1852. He was an artist that worked as a lithographer and cartoonist and is most famously known for the creation of La Catrina, which is one of the most recognizable symbols of Dia de los Muertos. It costs 10 pesos to enter and it's a great place to come down to get to know this artist's work even better. And here in the museum, they have an actual workshop where you can come down if you're lucky and watch people like Blanca and Orecio create some of this beautiful artwork. She just showed us a few different techniques they use, whether it's polished copper, stone, or wood. Whatever they do, it takes so much work and the details are just incredible. Two to three days a week, they'll actually be here doing this, but not on the weekend. So you might want to try to plan your trip around that. Yeah, and here you can also see a lot of the artwork on the walls that they've done and check out the presses here. <laughs> really unique stuff. It is so cool because you're getting the history here and then you're also getting the modern day right here as well where they're trying to preserve that tradition. <laughs> And right here behind me, you can see there are some vendors set up selling some clothing. If you wanted a bit more lively, we recommend coming down on the weekend because they have this big open air market where they're selling some handcrafted goods and food. Speaking of food, I am a bit hungry and there's a restaurant here we have been dying to try. So let's do it together. We asked our waitress for her recommendations and she said the chilaquiles, which you know Adam was so excited about, so we got a half order of that. We also went with a omelet with brajas poblanos and then we got the cochinita pea bill. She said it was amazing and she was right. It has its influence in the Yucatan Peninsula, hence the name here. This restaurant is open from 8 to 1.30 every day of the week. And remember, when a place offers a half portion of their food, it's usually because the portions are huge. And this place is no exception. Now that our bellies are full, let's head down to the city center. Come along. Welcome to the historical center and heart of Aguas Calientes. We are starting here in Plaza de la Patria. This large open space is great for a stroll. You can take a seat in the shade of the trees or maybe even catch an event. We lucked out and have been here during their cultural festival. So throughout the days and nights, we've been able to see an array of performances, including dance and song. There were some really talented kids as well that were pretty impressive. On the south side of the plaza, you can find government buildings such as the Municipal Palace with its neoclassical facade 
Palace, as well as the Government Palace. If you head inside, you will be delighted by the mini murals, as well as the famous one titled The National Fair of San Marcos, done by Chilean artist Osvaldo Barra Cunningham, a disciple of Diego Rivera. The architecture was also really stunning, so take time to stop in and take a look around. It's definitely one of the most beautiful government palaces we have seen in Mexico. And just off the plaza, you can find pedestrian walkways, which is a great place to go shopping, see some dancing, or grab yourself something to eat or drink, like right here where I'm getting an aguas frescas for 20 pesos, one liter of limon con chia. Remember, we're at a higher altitude here, so you wanna make sure you're staying hydrated. Absolutely, it's right there for you. Ah, gracias. <laughs> oh, 25. Sorry, it's 25. <laughs> Adam trying to take advantage. Hey man, you gotta see what you can get. <laughs> How is it? Mm. So refreshing and cool as it goes down. You guys wanna try some? Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> Over to the east here, you will find the main cathedral in town dedicated to Our Lady of the Assumption. Construction was finished in 1738 and is a blend of Baroque and Neoclassical. As pretty as it is during the day, I think it's much more so at night. So make sure to come down here then to experience the city under the glow of its lights. And just to its side right here is where you can find the colorful Aguas Calientes letters, which as you know, say it with me, is a great place to snap a photo. And apparently they also knew I was coming and they set up this huge A. <laughs> Just for you, babe. Thank you. <laughs> Check out this guy. I Hola. love it. Chacho. Hola. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this guy's been riding around on his bike. He's got the Katrina on the back. It says, welcome to all the tourists. I just love that. And what I love about these colonial cities is the architecture, like the stonework right here. And in front of us is the historic Teatro Morelos, and it is stunning. This building is best known for being the meeting point for the Sovereign Revolutionary Convention in 1914, where many of the great generals and leaders of the Mexican Revolution met. Nowadays, you can come here and enjoy a performance or other social event. On one side of the theater is the patio of jacarandas. It's sort of a community garden that we got to come to the other night and catch some live music under these beautiful jacaranda trees. And on the other side is the patio of Jesus Contreras. Born here in Aguascalientes, he was one of the most representative sculptors of the late 19th century here in Mexico. And here in this patio dedicated to him, you can see many of his impressive sculptures. All right, now we're gonna head west to the Barrio of San Marcos, so come with us. Just around the corner here on Venustiano Carranza, you can find the Cultural Institute of Aguas Calientes. Here you can find some temporary exhibits and galleries in this historic setting. I just love these arches and this yellow color. I also read that throughout the year they hold courses, classes, and some other fun stuff, so maybe when you're here you can join in. Just across the street and down a little bit is the Regional History Museum. This small but interesting place is a must stop if you're looking for some more information about the area. There's the music right there. I was just gonna say along the road here, there are many restaurants, cafes, and bars. We haven't been out at night, but it seems like it is really set up for a party. I should say fiesta. <laughs> And check it out, this truck right here is making milk deliveries in those old school giant milk containers. I love it. Yeah, that's really neat. You don't see that every day. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, let's keep going down to San Marcos. Like Barrio del Encino, this is one of the original neighborhoods here in Aguas Calientes. If the name sounds familiar, it may be because this is where the National Fair of San Marcos is held annually every April for about three weeks, making it the largest fair in Mexico. Many people come to the fair to witness something that has become very controversial, but is also one of the state's greatest traditions, bullfighting. Bullfighting was brought to the country by conquistadors over 500 years ago. Behind me here, you can find the oldest bullfighting ring in all of Mexico. Plaza de Toros San Marcos, which dates back to the 19th century. Nowadays, it's a school for aspiring matadors. Ole! 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 <laughs> The newer bull ring known as Plaza de Toros Monumental de Aguas Calientes is located just southeast of here and is known to be the fourth largest bull ring in all of Mexico. 
Across the street here is Jardin de San Marcos, the central meeting point and garden of this neighborhood. It is very well maintained and clean with many shaded seating areas, a kiosco fountain, and sculptures throughout. On the western end of the garden, you will find the Temple of San Marcos, the main church here in the neighborhood. And on the weekend when we were here, we saw so many vendors. They were selling food and drinks. And I was just envisioning this place during the fair. I bet it is absolutely packed. People having such a great time. I would definitely love to come here then. Me too. And while we are here enjoying this beautiful garden, we would love to give a special shout out to our new patrons. Jose, Rick, Steven, Kathy, Lauda. Mari Carrie, Yukin, Sarah, and Jesse, thank you so much for becoming a part of this community. As we travel around Mexico and the world, you are the part that's making this possible. So, muchas gracias from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, we appre appreciate. <laughs> we do appreciate you, and we appreciate you <laughs> immensely. So, thanks again. If you would like to become a part of our Patreon community, we'll put the link in the description below. Well, we have one more really neat spot to take you to today. So, how about? We we choo-choo our way over there. I hope we can find the right track. We'll see you there. <laughs> Welcome to Plaza de las Tres Centurias from San Marcos. We hopped in a DD for 40 pesos. It took about 10 minutes to get over here to Barrio de la Estacion. Behind me, you can see this historic complex, which is an homage to the train legacy here in Aguas Calientes. On site, you can find a train station, some old railway cars, and much, much more. So let's go check it out together. All aboard the Aguas Calientes Express. <laughs> At the entrance, you will be greeted by this massive steam engine. At one point, Aguas Calientes was the biggest hub in the Mexico railway system. So there is a ton of history here. Right now, this plaza is very quiet. However, on the weekends, this plaza comes alive with vendors, live music, people hanging out and just having a good time. It's definitely worth coming down to check out. Behind us here is the old train station, which has since been restored. Inside, you can marvel at its beautiful interior, ticket booth, vintage luggage, and wooden benches where the passengers would wait for their trains. It's a wonderful place to come. It is only open Wednesday through Sunday from 12 until 6, so plan your trip accordingly. Across from the station is the old loading dock that has a small museum at the end where you can get a lot more information about what happened inside this cool building, as well as my favorite part of this in higher complex. The choo-choo-choo-choo-choo-choo-choo-choo train yard where you can come down and explore some of the antique trains and really feel like you're part of the history as well as these really neat old hand cars. This just made me flash back to my childhood watching Looney Tunes and Wile E. Coyote. All I gotta say is meet me. <laughs> <laughs> And the best part is, it's all free. So you can come down here by yourself with friends or family, enjoy the sights, and feel like you've been transported back in time at no cost to you. <laughs> I feel like nothing is free in life anymore. So true. <laughs> and when you're here, you may even get lucky and see the afternoon train go by. Check it out. How cool is that? Look at those double deckers going by. <laughs> this is a serious train. <laughs> Look up there, there's a guy on the roof. There's police. Whoa. He's waving. <laughs> hey. And when you're done exploring the station, you can cross over the highway here to the rest of this massive complex where the factories and buildings have been transformed into art spaces such as Museo Espacio. This former railway workshop is now home to a contemporary art museum where you can even see remnants of the original tracks through the glass on the floor. Unfortunately, as you can see, we have reached the caboose, which means our time with you this week is at an end. But like we promised earlier, first, some of our recommendations. Starting with Los Pintaditos. If you like birria, this is the place to come sample it. We got it in the form of tacos and quesadillas and of course some consomme on the side to sip and dip it in. It was so tasty. Next up, the Quinta Barrio, which means the fifth neighborhood, <laughs> which is very clever. This place is a food hall, so it has a bar and several restaurants you can choose from. We went with some tropical ceviche, a bright fresh salad with serrano ham, strawberries and apples, and a serrano ham torta with mushrooms and 
provolone cheese. The food was great and we got to enjoy a football match <laughs> on the large outdoor TV. And last but not least, a couple more attractions that you might want to check out when you're here, starting with Templo de San Antonio de Padua, which some say is the most beautiful church here in the capital. And we can attest to that. It is quite gorgeous. And to its east is Museo de Aguascalientes, which is either the city or state museum. I'm not sure. We didn't get to check it out, unfortunately, because it was closed. But Adam peeked through the windows and said it looked great. They are closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, so make sure to bear that in mind if you are planning on visiting. Yes, but thank you so, so much again for joining us here in the capital of the state of Aguascalientes. We had a wonderful time. It would have been nowhere near as much fun if you hadn't been here to share it with. So thanks for that because you make our time that much more special. You certainly do. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to... Ding, ling, 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 the train. We'll see you next time. Adios.